Berry on the new Talk Radio 1450 WCTC. It is 738. We are back on Jersey Central on the new Talk Radio WCTC, the voice of Central Jersey. Got some drizzle and a very chilly 56 uh, temperature today. Uh, we'll get up to around 70 or so. We'll get your full forecast coming up at 745. Tom Colangelo will have another traffic update for us then, too. And some Somerset Patriots playoff baseball tickets. We'll be giving those away a little bit later on this morning. Let's continue uh, marking this week of our truck driver, uh, National Truck Driver Appreciation Week. I have another guest who is with me on the Miller Lite Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline. He's the president and CEO of U.S. Express, which happens to employ 9,000 drivers across the country. And they're launching a very unique program, which is the first of its kind. And I kind of like what these guys are doing. So uh, Eric Fuller is with us here uh, on WCTC. Hi, Eric. It's Burt Barron. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And thank you for all the jobs uh, that your industry is creating, not only across our country, but here in New Jersey. It's really greatly appreciated. But uh, talk about this new program you guys are launching and uh, how this is going to bring new people and another generation of, of drivers to your industry. Sure. So it's called U.S. Express Full Ride. And uh, it, it's really based on the fact that we are struggling to bring new people into the industry. Um, if, you, if you look at the big issue in our industry, we have people that are leaving the industry, that are retiring from the industry, but we're not bringing a lot of new people in, whether it be millennials or people looking for a career. And so we were looking at, at, at a way, how can we attract new people into the industry? And it really started by you know hearing what Starbucks was doing from a uh, – from paying for school for a lot of their employees, uh, we kind of started with that idea, and then it kind of evolved from there. And you, and you kind of take a page out of, say, the military, where a lot of people go into the military for a couple of years, and then they can get their education paid for. Um, you know, instead, may, maybe people can look at trucking as a viable solution for a couple of years. Maybe they don't necessarily want it as a full-time career, but they're willing to do it to get an education that's fully paid for so that they can go into other areas. And that's kind of where the idea originally started from. Eric, why do you think so many young people aren't sort of gravitating towards trucking as a career? Do they have the impression that maybe, well, it's uh, it's tiring, it's hot, the days are long, it's a tough drive, it's a hard job, you're by yourself? Uh, how do you get people uh, across that, you know what, uh, maybe it's not for everybody, but for the people that are interested in it, it could be a great gig and a very rewarding career. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, look, it's a tough, tough job. Um, they're out on the road. In a lot of cases, they can be out on the road for two weeks at a time, living in a truck. So, you know, we understand that it's not, uh, you know, that glamorous job, um, especially with the newer generation. It's a little bit different of a mindset. Um, they really want to kind of fit their job around their lifestyle, and that that's really – the important part of trying to find a career. So we're competing against construction. We compete against manufacturing. We keep competing against warehousing. So what we need to do is how do we set ourselves uh, apart from the pack and make our jobs look a little bit more attractive. And some of the things we can do internally by changing schedules, trying to make it so the drivers can get home more often, trying to have more of a work-life balance, but benefits like being able to uh, pay for uh, a very expensive education is one that we think can uh, hopefully help attract a newer type of driver into the industry. Yeah, I agree with everything you're saying, Eric. And uh, you have to ask yourself as a young person, look, uh, you want to be a rock star and you're going to work hard and you don't know where your next meal is going to come from. Or you can learn a trade like this and get free college tuition. And you know what? When that alarm clock goes off the next morning, you got a good paying, solid job to go to. What would you rather have? That's kind of the way that I like to position this to people. Right. And, and I think the other piece that's worth mentioning is not only are we going to offer this uh, for uh, people that are coming in driving to go into uh, to have their college paid for, but as we were developing this program, we also we have this segment of, uh, of our population that are truck drivers, that are career truck drivers, that have chosen this as a career, and we, we didn't want to – have a benefit for those maybe that were more transient that maybe wanted to come in and then and then leave but what about what are we going to do for the career truck drivers and so we decided that we are going to pay for the education for their children as well wow and so um any current truck driver of us express or anybody that becomes a truck driver of us express we will pay for their children to go through this online college um, and get a degree and it's both undergraduate degree and graduate degrees and, and a, a driver can have up to two children at any given time time under this program that's being that their college is being paid for online awesome now now explain this part to me eric because i've heard the term a million times and i don't know what it means but when someone says they're an owner operator are there owner operators that work for your company that might qualify for this or do you have to work for your company 
Yes, you have to be a company employee. Okay. We do have some owner operators, but they would not be eligible for this program. Okay. And uh, just so, so for people listening, you could give the definition. What, what exactly is versus an owner operator versus someone who just sure. drives a truck for a company? So if you're an owner operator, you technically own your own truck, so you're paying for your own fuel. You, you've got you've got a little bit more kind of ownership in the process. While if uh, you're a company employee, we own the tractor, we pay for the fuel. You're you're just uh, you're you're technically just an employee that's driving that truck uh, back and forth versus actually owning that tractor. So it's almost like you're your own little small business if you're an owner operator. Absolutely. And you compete with everybody else to get work. Yes. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. I'd rather work for the big company if it was up to me because uh, you guys are so big and 9,000 employees. Uh, you, this is a stable outfit you guys have here. Yeah, it, it, it just depends on uh, the type of driver, but it, it, there's a little more consistency there probably. Gotcha. Okay. How long has uh, U.S. Express uh, been around, Eric? We've been around since 1986. A couple changes in the trucking industry since then, right? Yeah, there's a lot of things going on. We just recently had this electronic logging device mandate that went into December of 2017 that has really changed things and requires that uh, all trucks out on the road have electronic logs now. So the old days of the paper logs and being able to keep a couple different log books are over. Everything's electronic and digital, and so we know exactly how many minute, uh, hours, or really even minutes and seconds, every driver has in each status. How many hours they, or how many minutes they have left in their day? How how, how many uh, minutes they drove in each area? All of that. We can compile all that information digitally, and that's all the trucks out on the road are required to have that now. That's a big deal. Nice. Uh, I'll let you give out a website uh, in just a moment about how people can get more information. But sure. I know I know what question I want to ask a trucking guy. I drive. Uh, on Route 78 and Interstate uh, 78 and Interstate 287 here in New Jersey every single day. And in the hours that I'm driving through, about 4 or 4.30 in the morning, I always see a lot of trucks parked along the side of the road. And I, I've heard that it's because of, you know, you can drive so many hours or they're going to make a pickup or a delivery where the place isn't open yet. There's probably a variety of reasons, but what are some that sometimes when I just see trucks kind of parked off and dotting the interstate in the middle of the night, Eric, there's probably a variety of reasons, right? Sure, there are. But I think the biggest thing is just a lack of available uh, of available uh, parking, um, and mm. it's really it's a nationwide problem. Where if you look at, especially up up here in New Jersey, New York, where you have a lot of density, you don't have a lot of areas that are designated for truck parking, and so drivers are just trying to find some place that they can park and sleep for the night. And unfortunately, you, you create that issue, which really creates a safety problem. And so wow. the industry ourselves are trying to do everything we can to work with the states, the federal government. To how can we provide more uh, locations for trucks to park overnight and, uh, you know, trying to somehow alleviate that problem because it is a big issue. Thank you. That answers my question and probably a lot of people's that, you know what, they just don't have anywhere else to go. I guess that's the right. answer. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. As we wrap up, Eric, uh, the full ride program, where does someone go for more info? Sure, you can go to www.usxfullride.com. All right, Eric Fuller, President and CEO of U.S. Express, thank you for the time this morning, and uh, enjoy the rest of National Truck Driver Appreciation Week. And thank you so much for answering my questions this morning, because there's a few things I always wondered about. But, uh, but thank you for that, Eric. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your time. Appreciate you, it. You bet. Thank you. All right, Eric Fuller, my guest on the Miller Lite